hey there, guys and gals, and all our pals, to what the fan fatale. fatale. Yeah. Fan fatale. Yeah. Fan Hey guys, welcome back to the late night edition of WTFF. What the Femme? Fatal. I'm your co-host Femme. And I'm Fatal. A big thank you to everyone who tuned into our Wuthering Heights episode last week. Like always, we love hearing your comments and opinions. Today's topic of discussion is another well-known work of literary merit. Heart of Darkness. We have several guests with us in the studio tonight to discuss gender in Heart of Darkness. First, we have one of my favorites, Machiavella. Well, Femme, first and foremost, this tea is delicious. What is it? Hibiscus? Um, it's one of Lipton's finest blends. Hmm. Well, it's fabulous. I must say, this is one of my favorite podcasts. It's my utmost pleasure to be here. Thanks, Machiavella. Also in the studio tonight, we have the esteemed Mary. Hi, fam. I'm thrilled to be here tonight to share some insightful points on gender roles in Heart of Darkness. Wonderful! Finally, we have the underdog of tonight's fight, Maribel Morgan. Excuse me? It's Mrs. Maribel Morgan. Thank you for having me. My husband is going to be so proud. Okay, now let's get started. Machiavella, as a notice, noted feminist, what are your overall impressions of the novel? Well, I believe that Heart of Darkness is the epitome of sexism. It's absolutely disgusting how we praise and reward Joseph Conrad with such merit in the literary world when his novel disrespects so many demographic and psychographic groups. Of course, race and Heart of Darkness is a huge conversation point among intellectuals, but where are our advocates? Nowhere. Why? Because sexism is always swept under the rug. I'm sick of it. We need to address the sexist ideas present in so many famous literary works. And what about you, Mrs. Morgan? I differ from the commonly held opinion that Heart of Darkness is a sexist work. As a matter of fact, it's simply blunt. I believe that Heart of Darkness is truthful in its representation of women. Modern feminists simply want the novel to adhere to their own disillusioned view of the world. Mary, what is your opinion? I find it interesting that today's readers and critics are so quick to label Heart of Darkness as racist, but almost entirely ignore the work's underlying sexism. Of course, this is a reflection of our own society, where we're much quicker to recognize and protest racial inequality than we are sexual inequality. A topic which is of particular interest to me is the absence of strong women in the text. The three female characters that are included in the novel are simply there to propel the plot. They have no thematic implications whatsoever. Even when they speak, their words are used to affirm typical female stereotypes. Just like how Chinua Chibe said, Did you mean Chinua Achebe? Yeah, that. Said that the natives were silenced by their dialogue and heart of darkness, so are the women. When Marlo's aunt speaks, it is only for her to be silenced by Marlo. The African mistress doesn't even speak. She only screams, grunts, and moans. All that the intended talks about is love and her delusional opinion of Kurtz. Every time a woman speaks in the novel, it is simply to affirm Conrad's sexist view of them. The absence of women is something that we see all the time in literature. Has everyone here read Catch-22? Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. The gender situation in Catch-22 is exactly the same as in Heart of Darkness. Women are practically absent from the text. I mean, sure, there are three or four women in the novel, like the nurses and the horse, but every single one of those characters is overtly sexualized. The only time that these women are ever discussed is when the men are having sex with them. They're there for plot purposes, just like in Heart of Darkness. That's like every time Conrad includes a female character, they're somehow used and abused by the male characters. Well, yeah, of course, that's the way that it is. The novel is a truthful representation of society. Women are absent from the main plot line because it's simply not their place. The women who are shown, such as the native mistress who does housework, are strong because they are in their place. Whether or not these women are strong people, I think that we can agree with them in saying that they're not strong characters at all. They solely function as plot devices. For example, Marlo's aunt is simply there to show how Marlo got the job. The native mistress is simply there to showcase the African landscape, and the intended is only there to highlight Marlo's inability to cope with what he had seen in the Congo. In all of these cases, women don't relate to the primary theme of the novel. 
These characters are presented as immune to and protected from the darkness that the men experience. I mean, yeah, they might present an alternative theme about gender, but you really have to dig to find it. The only people who see the gender aspect of the novel are those who really pay attention to it. See, I really want to discuss the three characters that Mary mentioned. For me, Marlo's aunt, Kurt's mistress, and Kurt's intended have all come to embody typical female stereotypes. I entirely agree. Marlo's aunt is portrayed as a woman incapable of masculine affairs. Her insightful opinion on imperialism is dismissed by Marlo, who noted that her discussion of manly topics made him, and I quote, quite uncomfortable. The mistress is a hypersexualized, exotic being, not a human. The first time that Conrad introduced the mistress, he had Marlowe describe her as a wild and gorgeous apparition of a woman and nothing more. The intended, of course, is the typical woman, naive, overly emotional, and incapable of handling the truth. Kurtz's mistress is hypersexualized, I agree, but her beauty is beyond compare and she has the ability to instill fear, something that white men use as their main tactic of control. So, when you really think about it, the native mistress has the same level of power as the, as the male characters. The only thing she is missing is the Maxim machine gun. And respect! The only thing that you neglect to realize is that sexual power isn't really power at all. The fact that the only kind of power given to the women in Heart of Darkness is sexual power is sexist in itself, Maribel. They have no economic power and no political power at all. Well, then let's talk about the aunt. What about her? She does have the economic status. She has social status as well. She could use it to propel her status, but doesn't. She lowers herself to serve Marlo, which is exactly what her purpose is. And sex is a form of power. Yeah, Marlo's aunt has money, but that doesn't mean that she isn't still portrayed in a sexist way. Marlo shows shame at having to go to a woman for financial assistance, which proves that Conrad believes that women should not have economic power. Not only that, but her political opinions are simply dismissed by Marlo as foolish. When she speaks of imperialism, Marlo silences her and says that she is out of touch. But when Kurt says something similar, he is glorified. Okay... Then what about the intended? She's clearly an example of female stereotypes. Well, yes, the intended is ignorant, but Conrad didn't portray her that way just to adhere to some silly stereotypes. He portrayed her that way because she is an example of her times. Ignorance is bliss. She was ignorant to the atrocities of her husband, and she was in bliss, which may be an example of the theme, which you feminists say the women have no part in theme. Marlo is ignorant to how horrible Kurtz is, and so is the intended. They live happier lives that way. But Maribel, honey, you can't use the fact that Conrad lived and wrote in a patriarchal society as an excuse for his portrayal of women. William Shakespeare was a part of the Elizabethan society, which we all know was extremely patriarchal. But yet, he still created extremely strong female characters. Take Othello, for example. Emilia and Desdemona have been studied by literary critics for centuries as prime examples of Shakespeare's experimentation with gender roles. Is there any of that in Heart of Darkness? Okay, we're almost out of time for today, but before we go, Fem and I would like to discuss upon a one final point. One thing that I noticed while reading Heart of Darkness was the connection between women and the natives. The idea of mother nature is presented multiple times throughout the work, and that nature is feminized. Both women and the Congo are used by men until they are barren, they are exotic and uncontrollable, but simultaneously must be controlled. The idea of paternalism is introduced time and time again. But wait. I believe that personifying nature in a feminine way is far from sexist. By giving the powerful elements in nature female pronouns, Conrad transfers the power to women themselves. For example, the mysterious sea is a she, and so is the Congolese jungle. Well, like Fem said though, Conrad goes on to say that these elements of nature must be conquered, and therefore, women must be too. I want to go back to Fem's point about how women and nature are both presented in the novel as things to be conquered. I think that it's important to note how every single woman is presented as the possession of a man in Heart of Darkness. Marlowe's aunt, Kurtz's mistress, and Kurtz's intended. The Congo is presented as a possession of men too. Like Femme said, Conrad presents the idea of paternalism over and over again. In Heart of Darkness, just as in Conrad's world, both women and nature must be conquered and protected. Okay, before Maribel gets too heated, I have to say that we're all out of time for today. Thank you so much for your contributions to today's discussions, everyone. It was thrilling. 
I hope that you will all come back to visit us on the show again sometime soon. To our listeners at home, thank you for tuning in. See you next time on what? The Femme Fatale! Today's episode of What the Femme Fatale is brought to you by the Congolese Travel Administration. Are you looking for your next travel destination? Visit the Congo today. Log on to www.congogogo.com slash travel plans and enter the discount code WTFF at checkout for 25% off of your travel package. Order within the next 30 minutes and we'll include a free river cruise with Marloni and ferries, courtesy of What the Femme Fatale. Hurry, quantities are limited. Come go go go! Hey! W T F F. What the Femme Fatale is produced by Lauren Productions. Copyright 2016.